All right, we continue with cricket on this Wednesday edition of the Sports Mac Zone. West Indies T20 captain Rovmon Powell and teammate Shimron Hetmyer's Rajasthan Royals are into Friday's qualifier two of the Indian Premier League after beating Royal Challengers Bengaluru earlier on Wednesday in Ahmedabad. Sent into bat, Royal Challengers Bengaluru posted a challenging 172 for two from their 20 overs. Virat Rajat Patidar top scored with 34 against player of the match. Ravi Chandran Ashwins 2 for 19. Chasing 173 for victory, the Royals reached 174 for 6 with a cameo of 60 not out of 8 deliveries from Ravman Powell, including the winning runs to win by 4 wickets with an over to spare. Nishavi Jaiswal led the chase with 45, Ryan Parag with 36 and Shimron Hetmyer, 26. Mohamed Siraj was at the pick of the RCB bowlers with 2 for 33. The result put an end to RCB's title chase, setting up a clash between Rajasthan Royals and Sunrisers Hyderabad in qualifier 2 on Friday. Well, Nikhil Uttam Chandani is still with us. Nikhil, what a match today. And I just want to tell the viewers, because I love doing this, Nikhil got his prediction wrong yesterday. Yeah, it did. Um, again, quite surprising, and it just I think is the perfect example that momentum does not exist in, in sport and in cricket, especially. You have one team who has won six games in a row against a team that's lost five in a row, but you show up different conditions, um, knockout game, different level of pressure, and yeah, you see a different winner. Yeah, sorry, I had so much fun doing that. <laughs> I I enjoy it. I love when you get it right too, though. Just the big, the big prediction is the winner, so let's see if I get that one right. <laughs> All right. Okay, so you have a little bit of time yeah. to think about that. No, I, I said yesterday, I, I think KKR win the IPL, but, so All let's right. see. Okay, game on. I look I'm forward standing to by it. <laughs> yeah, and you know, Nikhil, I want to move along to talk about how RCB mm. has gone about their business, because you mentioned the stats just now, of course, going six unbeaten and mm. all of that, coming down to the back end of the season. But they end, like they always do, another trophy-less season. Mm. And the women won the WPL, which was a good start, good momentum, but the men, of course, failing to take back that trophy. Yeah, obviously they'll be disappointed. I think probably twofold. On one end, they'll be quite happy with, at one stage, one win in their first eight games. No one would have had them to be in this position. But then to get here, to have that sort of form coming in, they probably would have expected to sort of be in that final at least. However, I think it sort of exposes, today exposed a few deficiencies in that team. One is their spin bowling. You compare the way their spinners went. They only bowled a total of four overs, Swapnil yeah. and Karan Sharma. Um, went at close to nine runs and over, only picked up the one wicket. Whereas you then see what a Rajasthan Royals and their spinners can do, where Chahal and Ashwin were brilliant. Um, bowled eight overs between them, controlled the middle overs, three wickets and less than eight runs and over. For me, that, I think, is so amazing how you see all the sixes, all the runs being scored. And when it comes down to the back end of the tournament, yesterday was the spinners, today is the spinners. It's the bowling attacks that are winning these games. And it was just a meticulous effort from the Rajasthan Royals planning, but just execution. Great on their part, and I think they deserve. Was it a yeah. risk for Kohli to try to take on Kahar Shahar after mm. just two balls today? I mean, given that it was early enough in the match where he could have you know, seen a little mm. bit more what was, what was happening on the pitch, with the spinner, because the ball wasn't turning all that much. Right. And in before it actually took on, took him on, and you're get, getting caught on the boundary. Kind of risky, but a risk I don't think he probably... That risk should have been taken as early as it was today. Mm. Well, the thing is, is that we've seen a different Virat Kohli in this IPL, whereas he's taken on spin as opposed to in the past, where he's been quite, I would say, tentative at times. And that slog sweep has been the biggest sort of highlight in this IPL. It's something he mentioned that he's brought out against the spin. Mm. So I love the setup from the Rajasthan Royals, because if you see that fielder there, he was positioned at sort of a cow corner mm. position, not necessarily deep mid-wicket, and it fell straight into his hands. It was perfect planning, knowing that he would take on the flighty delivery and, and good from Chahal. So, again, I think it shows you the disparity yesterday, Chakravati Narayan, today, Chahal and Ashwin. It shows you the value of having two quality spinners, regardless of conditions, because they always seem to control the middle overs. Today, that surface was really good, but even on flat decks, your spinners keep you in the game. Yeah, and they definitely did that. Faf Duplacy at the end of the match because he also found form coming down mm. to the end. Um, was asked about where they fell short and he said he felt as if they were 20 runs short because it was a 180 pitch when they were batting. Yeah, he will feel that way. I want to credit though Rajasthan because I think 
they sort of contained so well today. I look at Trent Bolt in the power play. Three overs he bowled with the new ball. Mm -hmm. One wicket and six runs. And people will look at that at that time and say it's really good. When you look at the grand scheme of the game, it is so important those three overs that went for just six runs. Had they gone for 20 or 30 runs, which is the norm, could have been a different result. So 170 becomes 200. And I think when you look back at it, it'll be the bowling attack that set the game up for the Royals. And even though... Their batting, I think, hasn't really hit its straps. They've missed Butler. Of course, Hetmeyer's just come back in. I still think it, once they have a bowling attack firing like that, it's going to be a dog fight to win this IPL. Yeah, and you know, Shimran Hetmeyer has really robbed us as, as cricket fans because I feel like we don't get to see the best of him sometimes. Mm. And then he has these batting stints like today, and then you remember how good he is, and you just like wish you can get that, especially in Windy's colours. Mm. How good was he today? Yeah, amazing. Obviously, it's a different role he plays for Rajasthan and for the West Indies. And credit to the Royals. I remember four years ago when he first went there, there were a lot of questions in terms of why is he playing that finishing role? He should be batting higher. But they sort of never listened to the external noise. They've trusted him in that role no matter what. He's had some seasons where he hasn't necessarily delivered. But this year and even last year, he has been fantastic. Straight rate close to 200. But to come in today in an eliminator, he came in, they needed 15 runs and over. When he got out, they needed 13 from 12. So it's almost that sort of calmness and trust that he will get the job done. And they back him no matter what. Um, once he's fit, he does play. Even if they have Robin Paul, even if they get better finishers or sort of bigger name finishers, they back Shimon Hetmeyer in that position. You say calm and I remember the commentator today when mm. speaking about Robin Powell. Spoke about how calm and cool he came out and did what he had to do. Maybe that's why he's one of our successful skippers so far in his career. Yeah, it's great to see two of them as well. Um, what I think about is how does this impact? Robman has obviously played the entire season with Hetmeyer at the <laughs> IPL and seen him in that role. A, a sure thing Rutherford has done very well in Hetmeyer's position. I wonder just how that sort of plays on Robman's mind when it comes to picking a West Indies 11 for that T20 World yeah, Cup. Talk about that catch today. Robin. Oh man, fantastic. <laughs> Three catches today and I think and on a team where they struggled, you saw Drew mm. Jarrell drop Patidar, that could have been massive, but instead they relied on someone like a Robin Paul, and yeah, that catch was, was sensational. Ridiculous. And it's, uh, it's been something that the West Indians have always held quite a high standard of our fielding, so it's great to see that they're sort of doing it all around the world. When you look at this um, um, team with Robman and, and, and Shimron, and Shimron mm. I don't know why I'm struggling today. <laughs> the, the, the idea that Robin could bat higher up in the order. Mm. He, he, he commented it after the match today where he said that he tries to fit into that role where he's, right. you know, to do what he needs to do for the team. But shouldn't he be batting higher given what he's capable of doing? He's a destructive bat batsman who can actually score mm. in different ways as well. He's not just a hitter. The, wouldn't it suit the team to put him a little bit higher, maybe at number four? Probably for Rajasthan's team, I can understand why you've got guys like Jarrell, Obviously, the captain, Sandra Sampson and Parag. So I understand why they want Rogman in that finishing position. But it seems to be West Indians just tend to be pigeon-held when it comes to finishing in these teams. I look at Puran as the same way. Yeah. He bats at three for the West Indies and dominates T20 cricket. But for Lucknow, he can't bat by higher than five and six. And even this year, Rajasthan, they've sent Ashwin ahead of Hetmeyer and Rogman. There's almost that thought from the outside world that our guys are only sort of effective hitting sixes, which I think is not necessarily the case. Not anymore. And, and Hetty has shown, and Robman as well for the West Indies, that they can bat in tough situations, come in in maybe the ninth or 10th over, and still sort of give themselves a chance at the back end. So it's probably just being pitch and held to that role. But look, I think they're quite effective in, in whatever role they play, to be honest. Yeah, and but it comes, it comes back again to, to what we're talking about in the first segment about playing for the West Indies. Mm. Because then when you get caught into this, in this position where you're, you're thinking finishing all the time right. and you're batting higher up the order, then it, it, it actually turns on, turns on itself in terms of how it benefits the West Indies. Because if you're batting at three or four for the West Indies, for example, and you're thinking instinctively hit, 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 mm. instead of rotating the strike, then it, it works counterproductive to what the West Indies is trying to accomplish. Yeah, I hear that. And I think probably luckily for the West Indies, to be honest, Sami has kind of asked for that, where they have so much depth in our batting, where Russell is batting at seven, Shepard at eight, Jason Hall at times at nine, Akil Hossein, who's got a 40 and one international cricket at 10. I think he doesn't mind if guys go a bit harder and take a few more risks in the middle, but I hear what you're saying. It's a completely different role 
for a Puran who is literally batting with 20 or 30 balls mm -hmm. in every game of the IPL for 14 matches to then come to the West Indies and potentially be there in the first over. Yeah. So it is a huge difference, but I think the guys are good enough to be able to sort of flick the switch and adapt. And I can understand why some will say they need to be at this camp and need to play this series to sort of get in tune with that role that they're asked to play. Yeah, because the thing about it is, it, it's, it, I played a lot of sport, yeah. and instinct for me is one of the key things. When you do something day after day, week after week after week, when you're going to a different setting, that instinct takes a while to break. Mm. And then, you know, you're doing something that you sh you're thinking, because in the heat of the game, you're thinking, you're not thinking Western is, you're thinking scoring runs. Right. You're, so you're, you, you play for, for Rajasthan, for example, and you're thinking, you know, I need to come in and finish. Right. When in reality, they need you to be batting a little bit longer. Um, you know, a few more overs and scoring consistently, rotating the strike, right. taking the fours and the sixes when they, when they present themselves. But then, you know, as I said before, it's, it's, it's hard to break that instinct after a while. Yeah, and I think also for someone like a Rovman, who I think has been exposed a few times in this IPL against the leg spin, because he always bats in that position where he's facing 10 to 20 balls max, he never really gets to bat a lot of leg exactly. spin. Exactly. Whereas for the Westernese, he can come in at number five and face a lot more deliveries because he's captain and because he's good enough. But I just think, yeah, it's tough. Again, it goes back to the question we asked earlier. Franchises want to win, so they will do what's best for their team. Yeah. And obviously, from a West Indian perspective, fans and, and those personnel want the players to be have the best practice. And it's why Josh Butler came out and said there should be no franchise tournament this close Over to a world event. To, yeah, agreed. So it's probably food for thought going forward, but yeah, it's the situation, the cards that you're dealt with. Yeah, and Nikhil, you said uh, KKR will go on to win the IPL. Who will lose to them in the final? Ah, well, I said Sunrisers, I think. I said Sunrisers would get to the final against KKR, but I tell you, in Chennai, this next game, Rajasthan, I really like this, the bowling attack. Uh, the batting is a little shaky, so you know what? I'm going to change it. In Chennai, I'm saying Rajasthan Royals, Ashwin, player of the match today, Chahal will be player of the match in that qualifier too. And I'm going to say Rajasthan Royals, KKR final. They've been probably the two best teams for the majority of the tournament. Yes. They deserve to be in the final. The cricket gods will smile on them. And on you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Nikhil, as usual, a pleasure chatting with you here on the Sportsmax Zone. Hopefully, we see you again before you leave. Hopefully. All right. Well, viewers, remember you can catch the Tata IPL T20 final on Sunday at 9 a.m. 10 ECT on Sportsmax. Sportsmax Cricket on the app. Stay connected and remember to stream on the Sportsmax app.